Hey, welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. This is Module 5.2b, and today we're making the automobile blocks wheel. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to start out with a new part, so I have that already done. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do an extruded boss base. Let's choose our front plane, and we're going to use a little bit different geometry. We're going to use a series of offset circles to make this. Our first circle is 0.44, and then we'll dimension out based upon that. So let's start by drawing a circle at our origin and giving it a dimension of 0.44. Our next step is we're going to do an offset circle from that, and you'll see here the first circle is 0 .050 offset. To do that, we'll click on Offset Entities, select our circle, and our offset distance is 0 .05. We'll make a second offset circle, 0 .35 away from uh, the offset entity that we just made. So let's again click on Offset Entities choose our third or our second circle make our third one that is 0.35 our last offset entity is going to be outside of our furthermost circle by 0.05 and we'll accept that so that's essentially what we have let me move my dimensions here so they're a little easier to see My sketch is fully defined. Exit. I'm going to extrude this blind 0.57. Now you'll notice that it doesn't have anything selected. It's not real sure what you what it wants you to select. Uh, so I'm going to clear my selection. I can come over here and hover over and you'll see how they turn different colors. So I'm going to click this ring and that ring. You'll notice that if I click something I don't want, I just click it a second time and it deselects it from over here in the selected contours. I'm going to extrude that 0.57 and accept it and we have something like that. Next we need to put a face on our wheel. So we're going to do another extrusion. Uh, I'm going to do an extruded boss base and we're going to choose the face of the rim here to do our sketch on. So we'll start out with our sketch and we're going to bring the circle that we drew which forms this outside or inside radius of the rim and then the inside radius of the axle. We want to bring those into this sketch. The way that we do that is we're going to convert entities. So as I select convert entities, the button, and then I choose this inside ring that turns orange, you'll see when I click on that, I get edge one. And that comes in from our first sketch where we did the extrusion. Click on the second one, there's edge two comes in. When I select that, you can barely see the black lines, but let me change to a slightly different model here, model view. Actually, let me go ahead and hide the underlying sketch. And now what you see, or the underlying uh, wheel, now what you'll see is you'll see that is my sketch. And I'm fully defined because I referenced the underlying geometry. So I'll turn this back so we can see it again exit my sketch and now I'm going to do a mid-plane extrusion except this time I'm only going to go to 0 0.05 and I've made the face of my wheel should have something that looks like that our next step in our drawing is going to be to cut a semicircle so again we're going to transfer some geometry onto this this time it'll be an extruded cut choose our face that we just extruded and I want to bring the underlying circle that forms this outside edge up as a reference geometry. So let's click on Convert Entities again and choose that circle. Accept it and I've got a black circle fully defined and now what I want to do is try and sketch a semicircle to make our model look like that in the end result. So this semicircle here is 0.25 inches in radius. So let's choose a three-point arc. And the reason that I chose my underlying circle first is I want to reference that. I want to start my arc coincident with that circle, join the other side at some point, it doesn't really matter, coincident, and then drop my arc down. So you'll see I have a coincident marker, a coincident marker. So I'm coincident on that circle. 
Now I need to modify this circle. I need to make it the right size. As I mentioned, it's 0.25, so I'll dimension that. The other thing I need to do is I need to put this point right over the top of, well, I don't really need to, but I'm going to put that point right over the top of my uh, origin. Uh, and that's useful for some symmetry purposes later, but uh, for right now, let's just do that. So we're going to add a relation. And I'm going to click on my point that forms that arc and click on the point that forms the circle. And I'm going to make them vertical. I'm going to add another relation here. And I want to put this point onto that radius. So I'm going to add a relation, choose my point, choose my radius, and I'm going to make them coincident. So now what I have is a 0.25 inch semicircle, and I have a fully defined sketch. The problem with this sketch is I've got too much of a circle here. I don't want that whole circle. I only want the interior portion that's inside these lines. So to get rid of that, I'm going to use a feature called Trim Entities. So I'll choose Trim Entities, and you'll see the instructions here. It basically just says to hold down your left cursor and drag your cursor across whatever you want to trim, and you'll get rid of it. So note this line is dark black, and as I hold my cursor down and trim across it, I get that little red glyph, and I'm still holding. When I release, it goes away, meaning that I just got rid of the line. So you see as I hover over it, there's no more circle there. The circle's still here. So I've drawn my semicircle, and I've trimmed off the excess line. I'll accept that. My sketch is now fully defined. And I'll exit my sketch. Now SolidWorks is guessing that I want to trim uh, blind the depth that I extruded, but I'm going to say uh, up to next. That way if this thickness changes uh, of my face, uh, my cut will change with it. Except my cut extrude. So I've got one semicircle cut out of my model. I need five of them. So the most efficient way to do this, I could repeat that, that action five, four more times and get five, but the most efficient way to do that is to do a mirror. Uh, not a mirror, I'm sorry, a, a pattern. And we're going to do a circular pattern right up here. It's underneath the linear pattern. Menu button, choose circular pattern. And the first thing I need to tell it is what, do I, what am I going to circle about? So I'm going to choose the outside uh, arc here. I could choose that. I could choose this. Anything that makes a full circle around the outside edge here. So I'll put my cursor into the axis. And you'll see it automatically chose my cut extrude because that was the only feature for it to really uh, mirror that was not used. I can select and deselect that. My cut extrude. I can set my instances at 10... I might not like that. They're overlapping, but I want five, and I want it to go all the way around. So five evenly spaced cuts. As I make that cut, you'll see now <clears throat> you have your finished feature. Now I've asked you to make a point uh, zero one chamfer around this outside face. So let's look at that. It's under the fillet menu button chamfer. Choose that and I'm going to choose 0 0.01 and I'm just going to click on the face. That will apply to both edges of the face as I roll it around here. Maybe not. There we go. We've got it to both edges of the face. And uh, actually I should just be able to click the face and have that apply. So I'm going to try that and see. And it did apply. It just didn't show it in the preview on this front edge. So I've got that 0 .05, 0 0.01 chamfer on the wheel. And that is how we construct the wheel. And we've gone through a few things. The very powerful tools in SolidWorks being convert entities, the trim function, as well as a circular pattern. Thanks for watching.